the last three videos, I've tried to give you an idea how my RFID tag detector can be built. In this final part of the series, I will show you how the op-amp circuit is made, how the different sections of the detector can be interconnected, and finally, how the detector is then adjusted and made ready to be used. The op-amp section needs only a small piece of vario board and could therefore be put anywhere inside the housing. I decided to install it directly behind the two potentiometers P5 and P6 that will be used to null the meter. I use an IC socket to hold the op-amp. This way the IC is not inserted into the socket until all soldering on its pins is finished. In addition to that, the socket makes it easier to replace the op-amp if this should ever be necessary. Little soldering tags are then soldered onto the vario board, which will be used to connect the op-amp to the different external components. After all the soldering tags, the resistors R6, R8, R9 and the trim port P7 are soldered onto the board and have been correctly wired to the IC socket, the op-amp can now be inserted. To prevent the traces of the board from being shorted by the potentiometer's metal surfaces, a few layers of paper are glued on them before the board can finally be installed inside the housing. After that, some pieces of strong 1mm copper wire are cut, bent and then soldered in place to fasten the board. The wires connect the potentiometers via the soldering tags to the op-amp and stabilize the board at the same time. After the potentiometers are connected to the board, the battery compartments are now soldered together and electrically connected to the enclosure, creating the device's chassis ground and allowing the housing to act as a piece of shielding. After that, the op-amp section is connected to the supply rails, the meter and other parts of the device by means of pieces of wire according to the circuit diagram from part 1 of this series. Don't forget the two resistors R5 and R7. They can either be soldered onto the vario board or directly on one of the soldering tags. Finally, all parts of the device are connected in the same fashion by use of pieces of wire which are soldered to soldering tags on the different boards. After all three boards have been interconnected with wires and the batteries have been put into the battery compartments, the device can now be switched on for the first time. It is however necessary to make some adjustments before the device can be put to any use. First, the trim ports P1 and P2 are tweaked so that the output voltages of IC1 and IC2, named V1 and V2, are equal in absolute value but reversed in polarity. Considering the voltage drop over the regulators, these voltages can be adjusted to some value between 7 and 8 and minus 7 and minus 8 volts respectively. The actual value is less important than the equality of both absolute values. Next, if it wasn't done already, the core of the RF transformer must be adjusted so that the oscillator and RF amplifier are working properly. For that, a temporary winding is wound around the detector coil, which is then attached to an oscilloscope or a light bulb. But how this is done was already explained in part 2 of the series. After the supply voltages are adjusted and the RF stage is operating, the circuit is in steady state so that the voltage over the current sensing resistor R7 and thus the voltage at the negative input of the op-amp is relatively stable. Now the reference voltage is to be adjusted with the trim ports P3 and P4 until the voltage difference between the two inputs is 0 volts. It doesn't matter if you went for a third voltage regulator as in this circuit or for a simple voltage divider, the process of adjustment is the same. With that being done, it is time to null the meter by adjusting the potentiometers P5 and P6. This must be done new every time that the RFID tag detector is switched on. That's why P5 and P6 are mounted on the front panel rather than being installed inside the housing. When nulling the detector, no RFID tag, metal object or body part is to be brought near the detector coil. The only thing that remains to be done now is to adjust the meter sensitivity by tweaking the trim port P7. The value that you should choose for the trim port P7 may vary depending on the impedance of the meter. 
which, by the way, can be salvaged from old radio receivers. Furthermore, it might be necessary to pre-adjust the sensitivity of the meter before you can null it. The whole process of adjusting and nulling the meter for the first time may involve some trial and error and take a few minutes to be done. If you are interested in using LEDs instead of or in addition to the meter, you might have to muck around for a while until you find the right values for the resistors and the right adjustments to make them work. At the moment I don't have the time for that, even though I already installed two LEDs to the front panel. So finally, after all the work, the housing of the device can be put together and the RFID tag detector is completed at last. If it is working properly and treated right, it should be easy to null, give a clear reading to RFID tags without smashing the needle against the case, it should give a negative reading to metal objects and to your hand because these two things are the most likely to disturb the detector. It can now be used to search for hidden RFID tags in all kinds of items, such as your clothes or credit cards. It also can be used to indicate if RFID tags are still working, which you try to disable, by using an RFID zapper or other means of destruction. As I told you before, this device is still a prototype and will be improved in the future. I will also try to upgrade it to a multi-purpose device that can be used as a transmitter. The next RFID video, however, is the construction of an RFID zapper that will disable RFID tags by means of a magnetic field. So if you are interested, watch my other videos and help me to educate and entertain people by subscribing to my channel. Thank you for your time.